President-elect Trump and some of his cabinet selections don't agree on key issues, according to the Wall Street Journal. His choice for budget director, Congressman Mick Mulvaney, has opposed raising the debt ceiling, whereas Trump campaigned on cutting taxes. Some of his selections also previously voiced support for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which Trump opposes. This coming as Trump's transition team announced Thomas Bossert will advise the president-elect on homeland security. Bossert previously worked in President George W. Bush's administration. And joining us uh, is former New York Lieutenant Governor Betsy McCoy. Uh, Betsy, good to see you here this Thank morning. Thank you. Uh, busy morning indeed. What does this, all of this mean for the incoming administration? to sort of see these disagreements. Well, Donald Trump does not want a gaggle of yes-men surrounding him. He wants to hear sound differences of opinion. But on the issue of the budget director designate, Mick Mulvaney, mm -hmm. on that one, Trump will get the better of the argument because uh, Trump promised during the campaign to slash taxes. It is key to his commitment to achieving 3 to 4 percent growth and eventually the deficit will come down. In some of the other areas I would look for more give and take, more disagreement. But contrary to what the Wall Street Journal suggested, I don't think you're going to see any rogue agencies under Donald Trump. Think about it. This time Americans elected a president who is an experienced manager, a CEO. Mm -hmm. he, he manages a vast international operation. So he knows how to do this, unlike his predecessor who really had no management experience coming into the White House. But still, of course, Jack, this is giving uh, his critics room to say, ah, 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 see there, I mean, look at this, their views are not aligned. Some critics are looking for any reason to, uh, to really bring up anything right now. I think if you look at President Trump, or President-elect Trump, uh, you'll notice a man who, when he's in a room, in a meeting room, uh, he, he really wants to bring out the best in people. And I think that's been uh, definitely um, established throughout the conversation that you've heard from uh, his, his current administration uh, that he's selected. But people that have worked alongside him, those that are, have been in the, the business rooms with him, uh, in the meeting rooms, and I think that's what's really important. Uh, we want a president-elect who has people that have has different views, uh, so that the American people can can be represented. You can't be represented if everyone agrees with you. And, and, and Leah, the Wall Street Journal, and it's a front page. Trump team differs on issues. In the piece, it says, but the division, but the, the divisions within the Trump administration on many key, key issues are notably stark and numerous, and they certainly lay them out. Right, and of course, critics are going to say that he came in with a lot of branding, but not with a lot of platform. But from my experience in the military, the best leaders that I worked with were the ones who would really take everyone's opinion into account. They didn't want just one opinion. They wanted to hear Good every point. aspect of each uh, situation that they were trying to That's assess right. so that then they could make the best decision. And from what I've learned, what I've heard of uh, Donald, Donald Trump's leadership style, and even if you watched him on The Apprentice, which I did, <laughs> you would see him basically listening to a advisors, listening to everyone's opinion, and then making a decision. So is that what you think he'll be doing as president? Well, exactly. And in some areas, he has a very clear path ahead, such as the tax cuts. I hope he comes right out of the gate with those. They are key yeah. to boosting our so prosperity. All right, I want to get to this this morning as well, because this will certainly be big news this morning. Secretary of State John Kerry is set to speak this morning about the Middle East peace process. I spoke with David Keyes last night, the spokesman for Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, on the Kelly file, and here was his reaction about the upcoming speech. What would really be helpful to the peace process is if the Obama administration actually asked from the Palestinians to recognize Israel as a Jewish state, to meet with Israel's prime minister, who has repeatedly offered uh, even to go to the parliament in Ramallah for peace talks. It would be very helpful if there was greater pressure on the Palestinian government to stop paying anyone who murders an Israeli. Those are the real barriers to peace. And unfortunately, far too much time um, has been has been put uh, pressuring Israel in diplomatic mm -hmm. forums. This speech is coming almost a week after the U.S. allowed a res resolution to pass at the United Nations, which criticizes Israel's Jewish settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Betsy, do you think this will complicate future relations uh, for the U.S. with Israel? I mean, there, it's already been... Well, no, icy. because President-elect Donald Trump has already made it clear that the United States stands with Israel. And what Obama did in the U.N. was stabbed Israel in the back and also betrayed 
our nation's long-standing friendship with Israel. I predict that Democrats and Republicans are going to strongly back President-elect Trump's plan to move the capital from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem as a first step. What I'm worried about is the other other uh, betraying steps that Obama may take what between now make? and when he leaves office. But I mean, what do you make of those accusations? I mean, that was, that's, that's huge. I mean, they, they're saying they have ironclad evidence that the Obama administration is buying the push for this resolution. Well, I hear uh, other people who are on the inside talking about what Obama may do next to betray and weaken mm -hmm. Israel. Yeah, I mean, a huge story is still developing there, and a lot of accusations on the table, and they doubled down on them uh, there. That was the spokesperson for Netanyahu. Well, you know, at the UN, um, Israel has always been challenged. Uh, you know, back in 1967, the Arab coalition tried to expel Israel from the UN. So, you know, what we have is basically a lame duck president and lame duck administration um, allowing things like this to happen instead of pulling the plug on this resolution. So that being um, said, does it matter what John Kerry says today? I think at this point, Israel is going is going to continue coming out strongly, but at the same time, you know what what John Kerry has to say today. Uh, you've had a few years at this point. Now we're what 22 days until inauguration. Three weeks. And now you're going to lay it out lay out a plan for towards peace. Yeah. I think that you know people are looking to the. Bill Jack, the world will be listening. And what's the message to our allies? I mean, you know, I do a lot of work at the United Nations, and that's a place where you would hope to see people come together uh, as one. Uh, but, you know, I, I think this is bad for America. I think we need... Governor Huckabee last night saying the U.N.'s not even a legitimate forum anymore. You, so the, the U.N. is there, in my opinion, for humanitarian needs in crisis. And also, to, you know, if we have a, a huge security issue, I think the U.N. has a place. But, you know, I, I think now at this time, this is probably the weakest point that I've seen in the United Nations. Has President Obama been a fr friend to Israel? <sighs> Unfortunately, not, not the friend that, that, that I would have liked to see. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh, heavy stuff. And by the way, I always like to give you a little sneak preview. Dagan's sitting down. She just ran up from the <laughs> in studio. So we'll get to her in just a little bit. But uh, a lot of stuff going on this morning. It's going to be a busy day. I mean, it's hard to believe it's a holiday shortened week. And there's, there is so much news. Yes. Uh, considering this, the transition team is being put together. John Kerry speaking this morning. So thanks to everybody for being here. And Betsy McVoy, good to see you and good Thank to have you, you here. And